welcome to my channel welcome to another tarot reading from me today's topic is going to be on what are your gifts to the world so basically what talents what contributions are you meant to bring to this world in this lifetime so this is for those of you who would like to choose without oracle cards um, I have four options for you to choose from. I thought it would be appropriate to use pendants since I'm talking about gifts here. So option number one is this um, Abalon, Abalon pendant, which is a sea snail. Option number two is this lavender quartz. All of these are silver with different embellishments option number three is are these uh, well it's a pendant with bees uh, it's based on a Minoan pattern actually from Crete so yeah there are a couple of bees meeting in the middle um, okay this is option number three and option number four is this pendant with the fluorite stone the green stone is fluorite i don't know about the small reddish one i don't know what that one is in any case this is fluorite okay so pause the video video if you need more time to think about which option to choose once again i do recommend that you close your eyes take a few deep breaths and focus on the question at hand and then open your eyes and just choose the first option that stands out to you without thinking about it too much and of course if you feel drawn to more than one option you can feel free to watch several or even all of them and see which one resonates i will see you at your reading so hello this is the selection process for the oracle cards for each for each pendant for each pile so spirit what can you tell me about pile number one what are their gifts to the world spirit what can you tell me about pile number one what are their gifts to the world help me choose the right card spirit what is pile number one's gift to the world or gift I'm getting this one spirit what is pile number two's gift to the world the people who have chosen the lavender quartz pendant what are their gifts to the world what are their gifts okay spirit what can you tell me about pile number three the people who have chosen the minoan bees pendant what are their gifts to the world spirit what are their gifts to the world what are their gifts to the world spirit still getting this one spirit what can you tell me about pile number four the people who have chosen the fluorite pendant what are their gifts to the world what are their gifts to the world help me out spirit this one as well No, I'm getting this one as well. Okay. So pile number one, you have this card with under my umbrella. Interesting. Pile number two, you have this card with tiny triumphs. Pile number three, you have this card with pure nature. 
Pile number four, you have this card with my home is my castle. All right. So let me see if I... Hopefully I will not burn down my apartment. Okay. I think that's about... Wait. Okay, so this is the close-up. I think this is as close, as close as I can get. Hopefully you can see them. So once again, pile number one, this is your pile with this card over here and this pendant with the abalone. Um, Pile number two is this card over here and this pendant over here with the lavender quartz. Pile number three is this card over here and this Minoan bees pendant. And pile number four is this card over here and the fluorite pendant. Once again, if you need more time to think, I would recommend you take some deep breaths. Close your eyes, exhale longer than you inhale because that's going to calm you down while meditating upon the question and then open your eyes and choose the first pile or piles that stand out to you and i will see you at your reading hello pile number one this is your reading if you have chosen this card over here that says under my umbrella and or this pendant with the abalone which is a kind of sea, sea snail Okay, so this is going to be the shuffling part, and you can go ahead and skip directly to the timestamp um, of the reading. So, Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number one? What are their gifts? What gifts are they meant to bring to this world in this lifetime? Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number one? What gifts are they meant to bring to this world in this lifetime? help me okay those came out quickly you got wow b community and cat independent i'm gonna put these aside here and then i'm gonna keep shuffling okay spirit what can you tell me about pile number one what gifts are they meant to bring to the world in this lifetime the people who chose the abalone pendant what can you tell me about pile number one what gifts are they meant to bring in this lifetime what gifts are they meant to bring in this lifetime spirit what gifts are they meant to bring in this lifetime spirit what can you tell me about pile number one what gifts are they meant to bring to the world So you have uh, the Page of Swords, the Eight of Pentacles, the Five of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, the Six of Wands, the Ace of Cups. Interesting. Okay, more cards. Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number one? What gifts are they meant to bring to the world in this lifetime? Help me out. People, the people who chose the Abalone Pendant. Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number one? What gifts are they meant to bring? to the world in this lifetime. 
I mean, these whites come out. Spirits, pile number one. What gifts are they meant to bring? Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number one? The people who chose the abalone pendant. What gifts are they meant to bring to the world in this lifetime? So you have death, the Knight of Cups, the Seven of Pentacles, the Empress, the Three of Pentacles, the Page of Pentacles. Okay, I'm going to read the oracle card now. So first of all, these animal spirit cards. You have be with community. You are a powerful creator. Your work blesses everything you touch. Be open to receiving sweetness. You are the queen of abundance. Interesting. I already see like a confirmation of the empress here. Cat independent. You are a natural healer. Your intuition is strong. You don't have to go with the crowd. Life supports you in every way. And now I'm going to read the description for this card here that says under my umbrella. Let's see from the booklet number 20. Compassion, care, friendship, protection. A man is perched on the back of a giant parrot. He is holding an umbrella which keeps the bird dry from the rain. This man is happy to help. He does not fear climbing up the big bird or a possible nip from her sharp beak. He is optimistic that his small umbrella is good enough to protect the bird from the weather. He is a true friend, aware of the power of a helping touch or smile to brighten someone's day. In turn, he is rewarded with a burst of color in his own life. Very interesting. Okay. So I definitely feel like two confirmations of the Empress card. So, first of all, I am going to start by saying that I will also select some messages from my little bowl of astrological messages at the end after I interpret the tarot cards. So, what I can see from your cards, clearly the main gifts you have to give to the world have to do with your professional life. I think you have a very high responsibility towards society in this lifetime. Really, there's no other way to put it. Um, I feel like you have to put you have to focus a lot of energy into your career in this lifetime, into your professional life. Um, you're gonna have to work very hard. I, I can see that the career, the gifts which for you coincide with a career most likely, uh, that you have to bring to the world are not something that are just going to be, um, you know, innate qualities. This is something you're going to have to work on for a long period of time. Because of the Three of Pentacles here, because of the Eight of Pentacles, the, the Seven of Pentacles, you have a lot of Pentacles, the Page of Pentacles as well, and the Ten of Pentacles ultimately. So basically... Your main gifts to the world have to do also with, I feel, abundance as well. Um, I think that for some of you, this could be that you are meant to be an entrepreneur or a person who has a really important role in the community that you live in. Because of these as well, be community and also cat independent. You have strong intuition. I feel like the dichotomy here, and also because of this card under my umbrella, so because of the dichotomy here between these two cards, you are a person who is a very independent thinker. You're someone who always lands on your feet. So you are someone that can be counted on in situations of, you know, turmoil or crisis. 
and you are meant to use this intelligence and your your intelligence and your intuition somehow also your ability to love and also your intuition because of this ace of cups energy here um to help your community so exactly how you're going to help your community it depends on many things i'm probably going to get more messages also from the astrological notes but just looking at your cards here i can see that your nurturing ability is very important so i would not be surprised if you were someone in healthcare. if you are not in healthcare, you're definitely in some kind of a profession where you are of service to people um could even be actually to animals i think but i would say more i would say especially in professions where you directly help people so you could be like some kind of a social worker um, or again you could have any kind of a business where you basically create jobs opportunities for others and I think that at part of your job actually is to teach people um, how to manage their finances so like you could be, I can think of these people who like are teaching courses on personal finance or um, even things like, I know it sounds maybe a little bit outdated, but something to do with like bordering on home economics, you know, how to manage your own affairs, your expenses. So I can think of authors or, you know, teachers that teach others how to manage their finances you could also be directly involved in professions to do with money so finances banking investments you can teach people about investments i feel i feel like a lot of your job is also about teaching people how to be empowered how to take their take ownership of their personal power and basically get out of a for lack of a better phrase victim mentality also i feel like part of your gift to the world is about being a mediator it's about teaching people how to get along also by leading by example you are a person who i think very easily maybe from a young age gets along or got along with people from different backgrounds your communication skills are pretty i would say pretty good you know your collaboration skills are very good as well i feel like you're yes you're a person who can easily get along with people from uh maybe even different backgrounds different cultures you know you can easily put yourself in another person's shoes and you're also not a person i think that is blinded by their ego like you can you know you can be the kind of person who is gracious and makes the first step towards um let's say mending a relationship or apologizing to someone if you really think that if you really realize that you made a mistake you know you're not the kind of person who will um i don't know like be blinded by pride and ego and you're probably the kind of person that doesn't like to um have like muddled relationships you want to clear things out if you feel like a person has you know bearing a, is bearing a grudge against you or like you're you have some kind of argument with someone you don't like to go to bed angry or something you want to clear things out immediately you are definitely also meant to be i definitely meant to be very successful professionally so there's like a reinforcement here because of the six of wands and the ten of pentacles especially um i feel like part of the gifts you have to give to the world could even be motherhood for i mean actually irrespective of your gender this can be about nurturing but for women especially i think that this is about motherhood being a good mother or teaching other people other women how to be good mothers that's another thing but anything to do with nurturing so this could even be something to do with nature nature preservation um sustainability sustainable economy measures 
I think being graceful and kind towards all, all living things. Also part of your gift to the world is the fact that you bring fresh ideas and fresh perspectives, especially when it comes to managing finances. I definitely feel like strong earth energy here, so I wouldn't be surprised if you have like a lot of um, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo energy, especially Taurus, I feel. Also with the death card here and um, the eight of pentacles, there could also be some, well, this is maybe specific, it's not for all of you, but could be some Scorpio energy as well, some 8th house energy. So I feel like you are meant to transform. Like, again, you could be teaching some people how to transform their finances, their way of life, their approach to the way they live. But I feel like it's especially something to do with career finances, you know, professional uh, related things. And of course, you would also be somehow connected to transformation in any form. But with respect to this context, I'm thinking transformation as in uh, reform. So like you could be working in, you know, things like renewable energies or um, how to recycle things, things, things to do with recycling, transformation, basically reusing so working towards a circular economy i feel like that's something that might be part of your mission it could also be like about you know psychology but i think this goes hand in hand so i think like for some of you it could be teaching people about psychology so that they could overcome their uh, overcome their mentalities with respect to their finances and the way that they live their lives I definitely feel like that's a possibility. You could be working in waste management or something as well. So like something to do with waste management. But this could even be transformation. I mean, any kind of transformation, but it has to do with transformation in the service of others so like teaching people how to transform their lives or their attitudes things like that i feel like that's pretty much the energy i definitely feel like you have a youthful spirit and you bring a fresh approach to things i feel like part of your mission part of your gifts is bringing a new perspective like i said so like a fresh perspective on things and you definitely have strong intuition, and I feel like part of the message here is there is a message that you need to trust your intuition, trust your feminine side. You have very, very strong intuition. And this is going to serve you in working with other people, understanding other people, being a mediator. Could even be, of course, being, um, you know, involved with some kind of a intuitive profession, let's say pretty much. Okay, so this is what I can see from your cards. And now let me see what I can get from the messages. So Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number one? What are their gifts to the world, Spirit? What are their gifts to the world? Spirit, how many is that? Yeah, six. Let me get two more. Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number one? What are their main gifts to the world? This one? Okay. What are their main gifts to the world? Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number one? What are their main gifts to the world? Okay. So let me see, Virgo, I'm not surprised, Virgo is about healthcare and service, the moon, the moon can be about motherhood, Gemini is about communication and versatility and also having a youthful approach, Libra is about being a mediator. 
sixth house car reinforcement of the virgo energy i think for some of you this is definitely about service being of service saturn as well could be about natural resources confirmation here uh could be about you focusing on renewable energy aquarius having avant-garde energy and being well helping society at large with different issues and seventh house which is a confirmation of the libra energy wow so <laughs> very strong confirmations really 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 i mean um so what i can see confirmations of here is saturn like i said from the beginning uh, whatever your gifts are, this is something that's going to take a long time for you to bring forth. So it's unlikely that your main contributions to the world are just going to be something like an innate talent, something that, you know, you were born with and it's ready made and you just maybe have to polish it a little bit and that's it. I think that you definitely have to work hard to bring your gifts to the world really fully uh, to reach your potential, most likely this is going, I, I, with Saturn here, I am, I mean, it would be difficult to put like an age on it or something, but I would say definitely after the age of 30. So you probably are the kind of person that's going to have, I think, slow progress in career. So I wonder if for some of you, maybe you're even doubting yourself with respect to career a lot, like especially, you know, early on in life, you might feel like, you're not seeing the progress that you want. You might be frustrated a lot. Um, but so if you feel like that sounds like you, um, this is basically a message that you need to stick with it. That, you know, it, it's kind of like it reminds me of this. Um, there's this message that I read ages ago that says something like, you know, some people take longer to develop because they have longer. Uh, they have a, a longer way to go <laughs> than others. So in other words, like if you, of course, if you're talking about, and I feel like with your energies, like you have some pretty high responsibilities towards the world here. So, um, you know, it's like, this is something that's going to take discipline, focus, and, you know, a lot of dedication. So, you know, kind of along the lines of Rome wasn't built in a day. Also, it's a confirmation here with the three of pentacles. You definitely... <laughs> You definitely are going to take a while with this. And this for some of you could even be now that I think about it. Although maybe for some of you because this is not a very, very strong um, energy. But for some of you, this could even be like you are meant to work in the legal system. Maybe changing legislation for some of you. Very specific. Um, but I think for a lot of you, especially with the 7th and the 6th house and Virgo and Libra. I think a lot of you are meant to work with people in one-on-one -on -one situations with respect to healthcare. This could be mental health. It could be any branch of medical science, um, any kind of therapist. So physical therapist, psychotherapist, marriage counselor, definitely with, with a lot of you. Um, anything to do with health healthcare, really. And of course, it could be about pets as well somehow, you know, with Virgo in the sixth house. <clears throat> I also, with the sixth house, and you also have the six of wands, I can see that um, this is not directly related to your gifts, but I can see that part of your path is to come across a lot of competition and a lot of enemies. And again, with the Saturn energy as well, this is giving me a feeling like you are going to go through a lot of frustrations and a lot of challenges until you finally reach your potential, like your full potential. And you're actually, when I talk about potential, I feel like for you, like this is going to be a lifelong quest. Um, like you might feel this constant need to improve yourself and really constantly learn and grow and be better. And you, you might feel like you never reach a point where you're like, you know, that's it. I have reached my my full, like I have reached the summit. Let me put it like that. It's, it's like you're probably a person that is not, uh, easily gonna rest on their laurels or become complacent. You're probably gonna feel like you keep wanna you, you wanna keep exploring different um, areas, especially since Virgo in the sixth house is really um, it's very focused on self development. You know, Virgo is the last. It's really interesting because Virgo is the last of the personal signs and libra is the first of the um the the how should i put them collective signs let me put it like that 
Uh, in other words, Virgo is kind of like the most um, developed that an individual can be before they enter into marriage. That's why it's the sign before Libra. So Virgo shows people who are constantly like perfectionism, you know, yeah, they're, they're um, influenced by perfectionism. So they're constantly feeling like they should be working on themselves, you know they're very rational very analytical so also with the virgo in the sixth house i feel like for some of you um you have probably very good you probably have very good logical thinking um you probably are gonna thrive in you know areas where logical thinking and analytical thinking are required but with the moon in there, uh, see, the moon is like sneaking in there. Also in between Virgo and Gemini, both of these signs are ruled by Mercury, right? So I definitely see that your intellect is part of the gifts that you have to bring to the to the world. But in between this, you also have the moon, which has to do with, you know, your intuition, your ability to nurture. Um, also with motherhood, like I said, so I feel like the moon is also a confirmation of the empress. And the moon is also about a feminine energy, right? So this is irrespective of your gender. This could be about being a healer, you know, helping other people, approaching other people from a perspective of empathy and understanding. And the Saturn is really showing your, like, well, I'm not surprised also Virgo and Saturn. I did say I wasn't surprised if you have a lot of, <laughs> I wonder if, if many of you have a lot of, um, earth energy I would be interested please comment in the comment section although I personally use sidereal zodiac I should mention that but irrespective of what zodiac you use I would be curious if you have a lot of earth sign energy um, but yeah with Saturn and Virgo here uh, there is a strong earth energy which reinforces the all the pentacles in the spread and with Aquarius, it's like, so I was going to say that, yeah, Saturn shows your staying power, your patience, your maturity, your ability to basically handle um, every, to handle obstacles and be responsible. You have a lot of staying power, a lot of endurance, and you probably looked at, you can, you're the kind of person who can become like a pillar of the community. Like, this is a reinforcement of what I said initially, because I don't <laughs> And now that I think about it, Saturn is probably the most hardworking energy. So there are multiple confirma confirmations here. All the pentacles, the seven of pentacles, the three of pentacles, the ten of pentacles, uh, the eight of pentacles, which is about perfecting the skills and Saturn. And then you also have the bee. So like you're a busy little bee, you know, <laughs> this is part of your this is your gifts like to the world. You are meant to be a person who also the cat and Aquarius, I feel, are related because Aquarius is, on the one hand, like Aquarius is the most, um, how should I put it, um, this sign that is most focused on, you know, social reform and the greater good and the masses and the future of humanity and they're very avant-garde in every way, you know, they're, they want to be, um, they want to be very much in the now or even in the future. So Aquarius is the most futuristic sign, pretty much. Uh, it's the sign of the revolutionaries, okay? So, and the cat is very independent. So I think it, it reinforces this energy that you're meant to be someone who transforms something. Also with the death card here. So you're meant to transform something, I feel. Like maybe even an entire field or bring some kind of a... Um, brand new idea a new way of doing things and it, when it comes to legislation you could be someone who ends some you know bad traditions or bad ways of doing things you know something that's going to lead to progress the progress of humanity at large i know that sounds kind of pompous but for some of you it could actually be to, like of course it doesn't have to be like you're gonna be che guevara but <laughs> Uh, it could be like a small thing that, you know, you may not even realize it, but it will be the building block for something bigger later on. Yeah, so this is pretty much what I have seen in your spread. So I think it's very interesting.
Yeah, so with also one thing that I was going to mention with Libra in the seventh house, definitely a strong focus on working uh, working with the public as well with Aquarius in the seventh house. So I wouldn't be surprised. And also with Gemini and Virgo, both of which are ruled by Mercury, strong communication skills and ability to, you know, relate to large groups of people. And also you can address an audience. You're the kind of person who can address an audience and make every single person in the audience feel like you only look at them. Um, so this is the kind of energy that I see here. So you could be the kind of person, like even in politics, really, you could even be in politics, some of you. Um, because you have that kind of like ability to attract, you know, the attention of large groups of people. And you come across as very trustworthy and very humanitarian, I feel. Um, and you could even be like part of your gifts to the world, okay, is about working in one-on-one -on -one situations and working with audiences and communicating. And it can also be something to do with relationships, you know, so maybe you could be like a relationship counselor, you know, relationship guru, something, you know, teaching people about how to choose the right partner. That's another thing that could be happening. Um, and once again, it could also be about business. The seventh house is about business as well. So that could be a confirmation of uh, the initial um, messages that I have seen about, about um, teaching people how to manage their finances, for instance, or how to increase their wealth. Yeah, so this is pretty much what I can see. And I hope that you have found it useful and interesting because uh, I definitely have. I thought it was really cool actually um and i uh, yeah if you have enjoyed it please don't forget to like and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel it's free and it's the easiest way to support me if you have found value in any of my readings please do subscribe and also if you're interested in a personal consultation you can email me at the email in the video description Hello pile number two, this is your reading if you have chosen this card which says tiny triumphs or and or this very nice lavender quartz pendant. So um, once again you can skip directly to the reading because this is the shuffling part and I'm going to be taking my time. So spirit, what can you tell me about pile number two, the people who chose the lavender quartz crystal what are their gifts to the world during this lifetime spirit what can you tell me about the people who have chosen the lavender quartz crystal what are their gifts to the world in this life what are their gifts to the world in this lifetime spirit I'm feeling the urge to get three of them, even though I was gonna plan, I was gonna, I was planning on getting only two. Okay, let's see. So you have elk nobility. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna read the descriptions after I select everything. Orca whale. I was, <laughs> I was gonna read orca male, but it says orca whale, and ladybug. Cute. Um. Okay, I'm gonna put this here. Now I'm going to select the rest of the cards. Let me see. Spirit. What can you tell me about pile number two? The people who have chosen the lavender quartz crystal pendant. The lavender quartz crystal pendant. What are their gifts to the world in this lifetime? Help me out, spirit. What are their gifts to the world in this lifetime? What's pile number two's gift to the world in this lifetime, spirit? Help me out here. Help me out here. Pile number two's gift to the world in this lifetime. What's pile number two's gift to the world in this lifetime or gifts? What should I be focusing on bringing to this world? Spirit, what should I be focusing on bringing to this world?
Spirit, what are pile number two's gift to the world? Gifts to the world in this lifetime. What should they be focusing on? Help me out, Spirit. What should they be focusing on, Spirit? This, no, I was not feeling this. Spirit, help me out. File number two, what do they need to bring to this world? What are their gifts to this world in this lifetime? Help me out, Spirit. Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number two? The people who have chosen the lavender quartz crystal. What are their gifts to the world? I can't believe this. You have two cards. I'm going to take all both of them. Wow, you have like a lot of cards. Okay, seven of pentacles, nine of pentacles, two of pentacles. Queen of Cups, the Two of Wands, the Knight of Wands, Strength, the Two of Swords. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to put the Two of Swords here and I'm going to take two other cards. So, Spirit, what does the Two of Swords I indicate? What are the two paths? shown by the two of swords spirit what are the two paths shown by the two of swords what are the two paths shown by the two of swords spirit what are the two paths shown what is the second path this way so you have justice or the eight of pentacles interesting i'm gonna put these here these are the two paths shown by the two of swords so i'm gonna read the oracle cards ladybug good luck you are a bright energy let worry go and be happy here and now feel good about being a loving and colorful you you bless the world with color and good luck orca adventure Dare to do things differently. Sing your wild song. Manifest your travel dreams. Attempt the great journey with confidence. Be loyal. Friends and family are your treasures. Be brave. You are more powerful than you know. And elk with nobility. Celebrate your accomplishments with humility. You are crowned with success. Powerful forces guide you. Your ability to conquer challenges is limitless interesting with the nobility because you have a lot of court cards here so yeah okay and now i'm going to read the description for this tiny triumphs card from the booklet okay attitude belief power of perseverance a big mouse dressed as a circus trainer is holding a small eagle the situation is inverted the predator is small and the prey is big this card urges us to believe in ourselves. Don't ever think you're too small or too outmatched in a situation. Inner size is what matters. Think back to a time when you felt good about an achievement. Don't give up now. With patience and hard work, you will triumph in the end. Okay, interesting. With patience and hard work, that's already a confirmation of other cards here. Like you have the Seven of Pentacles. <laughs> You also have the Three of Pentacles. You also have the Nine of Wands, which shows like you're going to have to deal with a lot of um, things that test your endurance. You also have the Three of Swords, which shows heartache. Okay, so what can I see about the gifts here? First of all, you have three queens. Um, you have the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Pentacles here, and the Queen of Wands. wow so i feel like your gift to the world has to do with 
being a leader, really. You have to be an inspiration towards other people. It's also about your creativity. The strength card, I mean, look at this. You have to be... Again, I wouldn't be surprised if you have a lot of fire energy in your horoscope. Um, because you have, like, the strength card, which suggests Leo to me. Can also, to some extent... Well, the strength card suggests, I think, any fixed sign. But I would say especially Leo. And you also have the Queen of Wands, which to me is pretty Leo. The Knight of Wands, pretty Leo. Um, so you also have the Knight of Cups as well. So I feel like with you... It's about creativity and it's about, you know, being artistic because you have a lot of fire and water energy, but you also have pentacles. So you're a person who is extremely creative, very intuitive, um, but you also have the ability to turn your dreams into reality. I feel like this is why you have the message here of like you are a bright energy and then you also have things about dare to do things differently sing your wild song i think for some of you it could even be that your gifts are about art manifest your travel dreams see what this card is saying uh attempt the great journey with confidence that is like a reinforcement of the two of wands so i think that you have a lot of, like, adventurous spirit. You have a lot of, you know, passion. And you are, I think, a person who is very idealistic. And I also think that really, because of your idealism, you you are probably going to get hurt a bit in your lifetime. That's probably why you have the Three of Swords. Um, the Three of Swords can show, like, disappointment, especially disappointment in relationships, heartaches. Um, but I think fortunately for many of you, the, you also have like, I think a strong support network in this life and you can rely on them. I think you might also be coming from, for some of you come from pretty good family backgrounds. So, you know, you could have like strong support. This doesn't necessarily mean, you know, a family who is wealthy, but I think you have some pretty strong support in your family and also friends. Maybe for some of you, it could be family. For some of you, it could be friends. For some of you, it could be both. Um, so I think that you are the kind of person that actually has a great um, a great sense of justice, really. Like you're a person who has, even though maybe, you, even when you like reach a point where you are more successful than others, I think that you never let it go to your head. Or at least, like, part of your gift, I think, is to be... Part of your gift to the world is about not letting it get to your head. I think it's about becoming successful and staying humble and down-to-earth as well. Or also being humble in general. This is part of your uh, gift and part of your lesson in this lifetime. Part of your gift is also your ability. Like, you're, you have a strong ability to multitask, to tackle... I think that you might actually have to tackle um, like two things at the same time. It's really interesting. It, see how this resonates, I think. But you might have like two major professions, two major career paths. Um, you know, you could even have like two like main defining interests or something. Um, it's really interesting here. You have like the Eight of Pentacles and you have Justice with the Two of Swords. So the Two of Swords and then you have the Two of Pentacles, both of which are about balancing and also the Two of Wands. I also wouldn't be surprised if you have a strong moon energy as well um, because of all this like you have this water energy here with the Orca and you have all these number twos coming up. So I think that, you know, you're definitely a person who is very, very intuitive, very creative. You could have gifts in, um, you know, imaginative professions, professions where you require a lot of imagination. You could be like a songwriter, a writer of any kind, any kind of a creator. 
you are also a person who has a lot of wanderlust so i think your gifts again are something to do with travel as well maybe like teaching people about travel or some something like something to do with travel and uh, if this could be travel you know physically or it could be just your wild ideas <laughs> it could be like um you know travel in your imagination with the force of your imagination so i definitely think like your gifts are something to do with um but also relating with people it could also be uh relating with people from different backgrounds as well your ability to relate and communicate to others is definitely part of the gifts you have to give to this world definitely something to do with travel now because like you have like the two and the eight of wands also it's about manifestation you part of your gift is also about teaching people how to become self-sufficient especially with respect to finances or materially it's about teaching people how to um yeah be self-sufficient self-reliant how to reach their own their own uh, financial independence i think you have a gift you you're you have a gift to basically become self-made you know to overcome a lot of challenges and a lot of hard work yeah, I think you teach people what they can achieve by your example. Because the Nine of Wands shows like a lot of hard work, a lot of um, um, also to some extent kind of like defensiveness. Um, but I think you teach people what they can do if they don't give up really. Also with the Eight of Wands, I wonder if you don't like, you could be something like a digital nomad or something like you teach people how to travel and at the same time you know make a living because of also you have the eight of wands and then you have the two of pentacles here which kind of leads me to along the same lines it's like you teach people how to juggle you know things that would things that are very different in nature so you know this can definitely lead me for some of you to think that you might be digital nomads um you know and and how to make the most of travels i think and also with creativity and, and uh, creativity and writing communication are very important. I think that part of your gifts are just to be yourself, to be authentic. That's a very strong message with the the ladybug especially here good luck it says you are a bright energy let worry go and be happy here and now i feel like you also teach people you know how to be authentic how to be happy uh with what they have not to be fake so that again kind of leads me to believe like you could be a creative person and also about strength this is about endurance this is also about being dependable and let me see what the knight of cups the knight of cups and the queen of cups now i just realized like you have the knight of cups and the queen of cups and the knight of wands and the queen of wands <laughs> very interesting wow so i think that you this is interesting so to me this shows me that also you could have like a a strong balance between your masculine and feminine sides because this is water and fire so you know like and also it's the queen and the knight i definitely feel like and since you know there's a, there are pairs here like i wonder if for some of you this is about like you know basically i mean i think for some of you it's also about you know teaching people not to compromise in relationships something to do with passion and stuff and expressing passion i think you're definitely a very passionate person whether you show that immediately or not you know depends on other things It's interesting because, like, now that I think about it, hmm. So, 
So like your masculine side is being expressed through a younger energy and your feminine side is like more mature and this is irrespective of your gender you know so because you have the knight of wands and the knight of like cups which are both very passionate one of them is more passionate the other one is more romantic i think it reinforces this idea that yeah you're definitely something to do with art i think but this could also be like being some kind of a revolutionary a, with a justice card this could be for some of you that your gifts are about maintaining justice fighting for justice um you know you could be working in the legal system fighting for the underprivileged i think for some of you but it's like now that i i look at these cards I, i'm getting that song in my head don't stop believing I don't know if you know it. I forgot what the band was called. Something Journey. Was it The Journey? <laughs> I don't remember. But you know what? I think you know which one. Don't stop believing. Something like that. Um, and That song. I feel like that's like your main gift. It's like. And it's interesting because it's something. I'm pretty sure the band is something to do with Journey or something. Um, So I feel like maybe that song is like your energy or it's very strongly connected to your energy i think that it's like you give people hope that's your your job is to be an inspiration and i think that there is a message you also kind of you should never consider being inauthentic because part of your job is to basically like you know like being being a beacon of hope for others so be authentic that's how you inspire others by being yourself and telling people that you know it's worth it it is worth um staying true to yourself and pursuing your interest no matter what this is definitely what i'm getting here so this is what i'm getting from the cards but now let me see what i'm going to be getting from the astrological notes so spirit what can you tell me about pile number two the people who chose the lavender quartz what are their gifts to the world, spirit? Let me see how many is that? Five, six, spirit. What, can, what are pile number two's gifts to the world? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Venus, this is arts. This is a confirmation. Ketu, this is spirituality. Interesting. Pisces, more arts. Venus is exalted in Pisces. The sun, more arts. I'm definitely betting that some of you have, a, have Leo or strong sun in your chart. This is a confirmation of the Leo energy that I was talking about earlier. Um, first house, this is personal expression and basically shining. So, yeah, individual individuality. Scorpio, this also was, I feel like I did mention it. Well, fixed sign here with the eighth could be Scorpio and it's water energy. Eleventh house, this is about, you know, touching the masses. Leo. <laughs> confirmation okay so definitely confirmation 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 so you're a very passionate person no doubt look at all this sun is fire basically sun is the element of fire in astrology there's no stronger fire energy than the sun and leo so yes also the first house is ruled by aries and the first house is about the physical body i feel like the first house to summit well it's also about individuality. The first house shows that I think your gifts to the world are just yourself. Like, just be yourself. And that is already a gift to the world. Like, <laughs> you are God's gift to mankind. And K2 also is about being brave and following your instincts as well. So I definitely feel like you're a person who has very strong spiritual um, energy very strong intuition but you might struggle to trust that intuition look at this didn't i say i mean i said the moon okay but the well the moon as a planet is the strongest um 
water related energy but pisces i mean come on you cannot make this up look at this orca and pisces <laughs> So this is like water energy, very strong water energy, Scorpio as well, water energy, water and fire. Yeah, these are your main things. We also have a little bit of, uh, so here we have the fire energy, the sun first house, K2 as well. I'm not going to get into the astrological theory, but K2 is closer to fire. Um, and you have Pisces, Scorpio, and then 11th house is a little bit of air. Venus is a little bit of earth. So Venus can account for all the pentacles here. And, well, Venus here in, look at this, Venus makes me think of this, the Knight of Pentacles. This is a woman, I think, most likely, um, dressed in, you know, beautiful, luxurious clothes. This could be a man, actually, I'm not sure. I mean, it's interesting because you have the sign of Mars on the clothing. So I guess this could be a man. It's very confusing. Um... <laughs> So, in any case, Venus is about abundance. It's about, it's also about love. It's about material abundance and about love. So, I feel like, you know, Venus is about you managing your finances, but it's also about love in, in the sense that, you know, on the one hand, focusing on love in general, loving other people, being artistic, spreading the love around. But it's also about, you know, loving yourself. You know, that's definitely part of your, I feel, well... Not exactly part of your gifts, but I think part of your path in this life. You have to develop your self-love. But Venus is also about, you know, abundance. It's, you know, managing finances. And it's about maybe teaching other people how to manage finances to some extent. Maybe. As well. It's interesting. If you were drawn to pile number one, also check that out. Maybe uh, if you were drawn to it. Because there could be messages there for you. With Pisces and Scorpio, I mean, I just can't make this up. You have all of the, so you have the queen, here you have the queen of wands, the queen of cups, the queen of, of pentacles. So to me, Venus is like the queen of pentacles. Um, Leo and the sun are the queen of wands and Pisces, Scorpio, Pisces especially, I think is the queen of cups. So yes, I think there's very strong confirmation. And, and really it, what's interesting here is that K2 is actually a co-ruler of Scorpio. So I think you're a person that you have a lot of strength, okay? So your gift is your strength. Your gift is your ability to get down to the bottom of things, you know, to be unwavering. Your willpower is your gift to the world. Um, you're a person who does well in crisis situations. You're a person who has unbelievable intuition and you need to learn to trust that intuition, with with Scorpio and K2, you could your gifts to the world could even have to do with you know something that is um for lack of a better word paranormal, like you know, something like even something like tarot, astrology, stuff like that, but I would say even more to do with psychology, research, you know, fields connected to research. Could even be sexuality because Venus and Scorpio, you know, both are connected to sexuality. So for some of you, that could be a thing. I don't know, like being a sex therapist or something like that. <clears throat> that could be a thing. Um, let me see. But I definitely, wow, like you have a lot of romantic energy. I wouldn't be surprised if you're also a person, like some of you could be into dramatic arts uh, because look at this, the first house, the sun in Leo, this is about a person who is comfortable being center stage. A person who is, you know, all eyes on me, like, and you feel comfortable there. And ma maybe for some of you, you may not feel that comfortable, actually. But I feel like this is a message that this is kind of like part of your, um, part of your gifts. Part of your gifts are to shine, to be a light for others, like I said, you know. The sun and, and Leo is like being that candle in the dark. Reminds me of that quote by Shakespeare, you know. Uh, look at how far that... I don't remember what the quote was, but it was something about how far that little candle shines its beams, you know. Something about like how... That's how important kind words are in a weary world. So I think like, yeah, that's part of you. Like that's... It's also for some of you, I feel, because you have Scorpio and also you have sun and Leo... I feel like, and also the Three of Swords, like, I think you're someone who, um, also, is, is like, a reinforcement of what I said initially from the cards, that I think you're a person who has gone through a lot of heartache, a lot of transformation, 
um, you really have come up through a lot of heart heartaches and, and hardships that have shaped you, have really polished your willpower, um, and you are meant to tell other people about, like, look what you can achieve, look what you can go through, like, I went through these things, you can, you can go through these things as well. So, even though I think, like, with Ketu, there might also be some insecurity with you, especially early on in life, and especially when it comes to your intuition, like, you're a person who has very strong intuition, but you may really doubt yourself because, well, intuition and intuitive person, people in the world, I guess, are not readily embraced by society so i think especially if you're someone who has i would say even bordering on paranormal abilities you know like hearing voices stuff like that i'm sure for for some of you it might even be the case i think that you maybe have struggled with feeling weird and out of place and all that but i think that there's a message here that you know be yourself be authentic that, it, I mean, it could be a gradual process. I'm not telling you, you know, create a YouTube channel and tell everyone that you hear voices. Maybe that's not the best way to go about it. But I think eventually this is how, this is your gift to the world, you know. On the one hand, telling people that you can change, you can see the light in the dark. And part, of, and also your creative abilities, your talents. Like, I think some of you, like I said, this is about romance. Like, Venus is exalted in Pisces. So artistic professions of any kind, if you feel drawn to them, that those are your gifts to the world. And also with the 11th house, this is about connecting with wide audiences, you know, connecting large groups of people. And also Venus and Pisces being exalted and Venus is about voice and singing, you know. And also you have here with um, sing your wild song. So I think for some of you, you could be singers, singers, artists, but any kind of artists, like I said, because... All of these energies are very, very artistic, very creative, especially when it comes to communication, creative communication and dramatic expression, you know, drama, um, theater, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But if this could also be unrelated to art. Could be a public, spe you could be a public speaker, you know, relating to wide audiences. You could even be in politics, actually, for some of you, these these are pretty strong indicators that you could actually be in politics as well uh, with the justice card as well like maybe standing for justice or something yeah you have a gift to appeal to wide audiences and feel people that you know you make people feel seen i think feel make them feel heard and understood that's those are your gifts to the world as well Okay, so this is pretty much what I can see in your reading, and I hope that you have found it useful, because, wow, I mean, I thought it was pretty interesting, and, um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, loads of cards that just wanted to come out for you, very interesting, okay, um, Spirit had a lot of messages, so I hope that you have enjoyed it, and once again, if you have found value in this reading, please do not forget to like the video and also comment in the comment section with anything you would like to share i'm very curious if this reading resonated um and also please subscribe it's free and hit the notifications bell if you want to see when i'm going to post a new video and um, also if you're interested in a personal consultation a personal tarot reading you can email me at the email in the video description and i can send you a pricing list i can also send you um, some reviews and feedbacks that I have gotten so far and a pricing list like I said and also so some sample readings for you to get an idea of what they look like if you're interested okay thank you hello pile number three this is your reading if you have chosen this little pendant with the bees based on Minoan art from the island of Crete and or this card that says pure nature for which i will be reading the description at the end after i select all the cards so this is the shuffling part and i'm going to add timestamps. you can skip directly to the reading okay so spirit what can you tell me about pile number three the people who have chosen the b pendant what can you tell me about pile number three what are their gifts to the world what should they be focusing on what gifts are they meant to bring to the world in this lifetime spirit 
What are their gifts to the world? Help me out here. Help me out here, spirit. What are their gifts to the world, spirit? Spirit, what is pile number threes? What are pile number threes gifts to the world? Help me out here. What are their gifts to the world? What are they meant to bring to this world in this lifetime? What are they meant to bring to this world? This one, okay. Let me see. You have swan, grace. Hmm. I'm going to read the description at the end. And then you have white stag, protector. Nice. Spirit. What can you tell me about pile number three? The people who have chosen the third pendant, the B pendant, the Minoan B pendant. Help me out here, spirit. What are their gifts to the world? What are pile number three's gifts to the world? What are they meant to focus on in this lifetime? What are they meant to bring to the world in this lifetime? Spirit. These wanted to come out. Spirit, what are their gifts to the world? What can you tell me about pile number three? What are pile number three's gifts to the world, spirit? What are they meant to focus on in this lifetime? What gifts are they meant to bring to the world in this lifetime? Help me out, spirit. Help me out. What is pile number three meant to bring to this world? What is pile number three? All right. Spirit, wait, I'm going to show you the cards because then it will be difficult to lift them up. Queen of Swords. Okay, three of swords, seven of swords, the tower, the four of cups, the queen of wands, two queens now. Okay, Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number three? The people who have chosen the B pendant. What are their gifts to this world? What are their gifts to this world? What are they supposed to focus on in this lifetime to bring to the world, Spirit? What gifts are they meant to bring to the world, Spirit? Help me out. What gifts are they meant to bring to the world, Spirit? Help me out, actually, no. Spirit, what gifts are pile number three meant to bring to this world in this lifetime, Spirit? Help me choose the right cards. Spirit, what is this one? Okay. What's pile number three meant to bring to the world? What is pile or what are pile number three's gifts to the world in this lifetime? Help me out, spirit. Help me out to choose the right cards. Help me out, spirit. What are pile number three's gift to the world? Help me out, spirit. 
this one. All right. You have the Ace of Wands. The Seven of Swords again. Very interesting. The Hanged Man. The Moon. <laughs> wow. Okay. And the Wheel of Fortune. And the Page of Pentacles. Wow. Okay. You have some heavy stuff here. I'm going to start by reading the cards. Okay. So you have White Stag Protector. You are an old soul. Your best friend is nature. Use your intuition to take you where you want to go. Awaken to the powerful force within you. You are meant to create blessings with your magic. Wow. That's a reinforcement of the moon energy I'm feeling. Swan Grace, you who glides across the waters of my soul, bring me your wisdom and light. Help me transform into elegance and grace. Inspire me with dignity and the spirit of beauty. I feel like this is giving me similar vibes to this card, but because, yeah, pure nature. Nature, nature here about you feel like yourself in nature. Your best friend is nature. This is what this card is saying. And here you have pure nature. So there's a confirmation, I feel. But let me see the description for this card from the booklet. So number seven. Number seven. Grace, blooming youth, freshness. This young girl is flourishing as she develops into a woman. She loves her body and is aware of her unique beauty. Just as this girl does, cherish the beauty nature has given to you. See the softness and grace and keep the secrets of youth in your heart. The red peony symbolizes respect and honor, ideals that must be recognized in ourselves before we can genuinely share our true nature with others. Wow, very interesting. Okay, respect and honor. And what I also notice, you have the number seven here. So you have the number seven here twice. I feel like the number seven is pretty strong. Like you could be born on a date that maybe reduces to a number seven or you are a seven. Seven is important in your numerology, I feel. Okay. Um, okay, so looking at these cards, what are your gifts to the world? Wow. First of all, you have two um, chord cards here. You have the queen of, uh, is it two or three? I think the page is a chord card as well. So, but you have the queen of swords and you have the queen of, of um, wands. So I feel like your gift to the world is your intellectual ability on the one hand, your, not just your intellectual ability, but you have a great ability to to um how should i put it mm -hmm. you have a lot of endurance you have a lot of strength so i feel like your strength your inner um resilience that's the word your resilience is your gift to the world that's one of your gifts to the world um your passion as well your leadership ability i think your no nonsense approach like you're the kind of person that you know doesn't is not easily fooled nobody can pull the wool over your eyes so and also the seven i mean this kind of goes hand in hand so the queen of swords and the fact that you have the seven of swords twice and the three of swords i think that you are like <laughs> this is like the word that came to my mind it could be very specific but for some of you this could be the case like you're like you're some kind of a whistleblower um, like you're a person who, you know, I think, or, or like, like that child in the story with the emperor's new clothes, you know, you're, you're like the person that points out to things that are not right in the world. And basically, I think like for some of you, this could be literally like maybe you're meant to work in the justice system or like against, you know, some kind of anti-fraud um professions you know fighting for justice or any situation where you are fighting against people being deceived you know i feel especially people who are maybe like underprivileged i think 
part of your gift to the world. But look at this. This is so friggin' interesting. You have the Queen of Swords. You have the Ace of Wands, the Three of Swords, um, the Seven of Swords twice here on diagonal. And then you have the Hangman, the Tower, and the Moon. I, I mean, really, for some of you, and again, this could sound like really major, but I think for some of you, you really are meant to be some kind of a whistleblower. You are meant to change people's perspective on something. Um, I think, of course, it could be you affect people's perspective on life. You, you, you get people to challenge the status quo, you know? You come up with a new perspective, with new ideas, and you inspire people with your passion. You know, you could, yeah, you're an initiator as well. I think for some of you, you could be an entrepreneur. You could be like, um, yeah, a, a fire, like, <laughs> I was getting the word fire starter from Prodigy, you know, that song, that old 90s song. <laughs> like, for some of you, that could be the case. But I also feel like you also have a very strong, very, very strong intuition. Look at this, like the, the tower and the moon underneath. Wow. This is really interesting. Because also you have the tower here and there are two towers here as well. Wow. <laughs> Let me see. So this is a number. Yeah. I think that really you are about, also I think you could be working on getting people to recognize their shadow sides you know this could be even i mean see how it resonates for some of you this could be like on a grand scale you know um like literally trying to change social views but irrespective like even on a micro level like this could be people that you come across you know on regular on a regular basis now I just realized, now you have the number 16 here, there's also a number 7. The number 16 on the tower boils down to a number 7 as well. You might think that I'm nuts with the numbers here, but numbers matter, y'all. You know, number 7 is a path of, is, is uh, you know, it's a path of an introvert on the one hand, but it's also the path of a person who is, like, very individualistic and basically could bring genius ideas and since you have the hanged man here like this kind of reinforces that you know your gift to the world is you're gonna you're gonna bring something that's gonna change a lot of perspectives on something major i think but also because the seven of swords comes out twice like i said i feel like your message here your gift to the world is about um recognizing deception maybe teaching other people how to recognize deception as well and it could be related to relationships for a lot of you i mean well deception usually is related to relationships because it's like a human thing animals don't deceive <laughs> i mean they do but i won't get into that philosophical debate basically this is social issues right relationship issues Really interesting with the nature here, white stag protector. Like the white stag energy, now that I think about it, is kind of like a mirroring or like a reinforcement of the queen of swords here. And it's so interesting because, I mean, the towers, look at this, the towers, three towers, well, one of them is collapsing. Like you're meant to be kind of a protector and defender, but I think people of people who are underprivileged, people who cannot protect themselves, you teach people how to be discerning. Look at this. Yeah, like, I definitely feel like your, first of well, in a nutshell, your gifts are about thinking, you know, they're intellectual, teaching people how to think, I think. But look at this, you teach people how to discern, you know, how to think for themselves, how to separate the wheat from the chaff in general, like, when it comes to how they, especially when it comes to relationships, I feel, you know, but their perception of reality in general, like, you're a person who tells people, you know, this is how it is, you know. This is how it is and stop gaslighting, stop with the BS and, you know, stop trying to pull the wool over my eyes. And I think you really get people to think, you know. But with the tower here, I feel like you are, and also the hangman, you're, you're basically meant to destroy something. And I know this sounds kind of like savage or something. 
obviously this doesn't mean like uh, literally like something physical but you could be like bringing something down like you could bring down like again this makes me think of a whistleblower like for some of you you could literally be whistleblowers um, but for most of you I feel like it, you know it's kind of like you're a mini whistleblower you know you're not gonna bring down a corporation but you get you collapse the BS in the world I think that's your job you know that's like getting people and, and, and it could be just helping people to destroy their um their shadow side you know because the moon has to do with the the um separation of the conscious and the subconscious you know so i feel like you could be a person who is you know look at this like these two dogs like one of them is a dog and the other is a wolf and they're both barking at the moon you know so <laughs> you're like the again which again makes me think of a whistleblower you know you're like someone who's like yelling at people like hey you know <laughs> like wake up and smell the bs wake up and smell the coffee um this is reality stop living in a dream or like you know it's it's like a, an awakening you are meant to awaken people's uh unconscious sides i think for some of you for i would say for many if not most of you um, these are your gifts to the world. So f subsequently, I think for some of you, you are meant to be, um, you know, could be even therapist, you know, with, with the moon. But the moon has to do with intuition. So any kind of profession where you are using your intuition, maybe even your imagination. But I would say for you, the main gift of, to you have to the world. OK, so with the moon energy, you probably also have strong uh, imagination, creativity and all that. But the main gift for you is your you use your intuition to get down to the bottom of things and especially i think when it comes to human relations to society at large and to individuals you basically spot what is not working and when it ha and what has to go you know you help people change their minds you change their perspective about different things and also your gift to the world is teaching people how to navigate with the ups and downs with with you know the tumultuousness of everyday life you could even be teaching i mean you could even be teaching people about spiritual things because of the moon and hear the, the Torah um, message here. So, I mean, I think you could be teaching people about spirituality, about trusting a divine power, um, you know, understanding, understanding like, you know, the hidden world behind everyday reality. Because, and it also, like, it's reinforced here by these. Like, look at this. You are an old soul. Your best friend is nature. Use your intuition to take you where you want to go. Awaken to the powerful force within you. You are meant to create blessings with your magic. I mean, <laughs> for some of you, it's, it like, this gives me shamanism vibes, you know? Like, you could be healing. You could be a kind of healer but by using unconventional methods as well. But at the same time, you have very good intellectual abilities. You have very strong logical abilities. You probably are good at articulating things, you know, your feelings, your thoughts, what you see in the world. You, can, you could even have like sparks of genius, I feel. Page of Pentacles. Your gift to the world also is, a, is about, to some extent, um, I think... Teaching people how to trust a higher power, you know, and I, I, you could be one of those people who is like uh, teaching people how to manifest to some extent, but not in a like, you know, mumbo jumbo kind of way. Like, I think you really, you really are, um, you know, putting your, how, how, what was the word? Putting your money where your mouth is, like <laughs> something like that, you know, you practice what you preach, okay? So like you look for like the middle ground between ideas and pragmatism and actually getting results, I think. Yeah, but your gift to the world has to do with intuition. I definitely feel that. Like intuition, your strong perception of, you know, the undercurrents in society, the undercurrents and the hidden, the hidden communication within communication on a daily basis, if that makes sense. And also with swan and grace, look at this. You who glides across the waters of my soul, bring me your wisdom and light. Help me transform into elegance and grace. Inspire me with inspire me with dignity and the spirit of beauty. And if you remember correctly, in this description, there was also something about dignity and respect. 
So, yeah, and the Queen of Swords is also basically a no-nonsense, you know, if you don't respect me, I'll basically cut you down kind of energy. So, I definitely feel like, you know, for you, the gifts is you teach people about respect as well. I think you could be talking about boundaries. You could even be a guiding force, especially for young women, because of this energy here, you know, or like you could be teach or uh, like you could be working towards healing the feminine energy in the world, if that makes sense. You know, not necessarily just young women. Um, but it's about, you know, you're you're like making the most of feminine energy, you know. Um, and not not toxic femininity, not excessive feminism or something like that. You know, it's about um honoring honoring the differences between the feminine and the masculine, but at the same time owning your power, you know, and insisting on dignity and respect, if that makes sense. Yeah, so this is pretty much what I can see from the cards. Now, let me get to the astrological messages. So, Spirit, what can you tell me about Pile 3? What are their gifts to the world? What are their gifts to the world, Spirit? What are their gifts to the world? Let me see. Three, four, what? How many is this? Four, five, six, seven. One more. Spirit, what are pile number three's gifts to the world? Help me. Okay. One popped out. So let me see. What do we have here? the ninth house Virgo Virgo is kind of like the sign of well the young woman so could be a reinforcement 10th house about career and social status let me see Jupiter justice reinforcement of the ninth house yeah, so you're, like, fighting for the un underprivileged, I feel. Mercury, communication skills, and analytical abilities, and logic. The moon. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Spirit has been listening. Spirit has been good to me nice and, and tonight, I mean. Venus, again, women, women's issues. She's got it. Fifth house. This is about... Well, this is, again, like, this could be about children. Like, you could be, like I said, I feel like, especially women children, I feel like, w look at this, you have both of the most feminine, femin uh, the most feminine planets here, the moon and Venus. So I think for uh, many of you, your job is something about women. Like, you have to guide women to fight for women's rights. It could even be in a really healthy way. And also about, like, kind of like, you know... Like I said, you know, healthy femininity. But it could also be like, again, this could be like a shamanism thing as well. Uh, the moon actually, not just connected, actually the moon can be reinforcing not just the moon card here, but also the wheel of fortune. Because the moon is about, you know, changes. It's about the ups and downs, the ebb and flow, you know. So I think it's about dealing with changes, being adaptable. I think these are your gifts to the world and also of course your intuition and it could also be for some of you because you could be like a mother figure that's something that I didn't mention I think uh, a guiding maternal type of person but again this is irrespective of your gender you definitely have a strong feminine energy here like you have you have a healing ability as well very strong with the moon and Venus the fifth house with the ninth house you could be a teacher a guide teacher Especially, even with, like, you could be a formal teacher, Jupiter as well. Look at this. Jupiter is ruling the ninth house and it rules Sagittarius. So, and also it's about justice, like I said. Jupiter and, Jupiter more than any planet actually is about truth. So you are a truth seeker, you know. You are a no BS kind of person. You want to, you, you want to clear the bs in the world okay you want to get people to change their perspectives their way of thinking also with mercury here mercury is about on the one hand communication skills on the other hand it's about 
um, analytical ability and Mercury rules Virgo. So like there's like a reinforcement here of the Virgo energy. Like I said, I feel like for Virgo, this is about something to do with young women. And young women means like, you know, well, it means young women, okay? <laughs> but young women, according to astrology, means women who haven't been mothers yet. Although technically, of course, mothers can also be very young. Um, but yes, Virgo has to do with like young women who are, let's say, like still figuring things out. They're, they're in that stage where they're trying to figure out who they are. So I definitely feel like for some of you, this could be the case that you have to guide women to work on women's issues. With the 10th house, also, you are, your gift to the world is your career, like your social status. I think that you are meant to be a person who is in a position of visibility, you know, you because this is like the... <laughs> Yeah, this is like the the world out there, you know, so it's like the 10th house is the opposite of the 4th house. So you're definitely not just meant to be like in your little cave where nobody sees you. I think you are meant to be known. You're meant to reach out to other people, you know. You could definitely be a teacher of any kind, a guide, a spe like a speaker, a public speaker of any kind. I think your gift is also your creativity. For some of you, this could be the case, like I said, the moon. And also there's a reinforcement here with the moon, Venus. Um, you could even be like a creative writer because Mercury is about communication for some of you. And with the fifth house, there is a reinforcement of creative ability, you know, very strong creative ability, actually. You could be working with children, young people, like I said. You could be, even for some of you, could be about speculation, like learning about investments. So teaching people about investments, that's definitely a possibility with these combinations here. You are meant to be like a, a spiritual teacher as well, like I said. I mean, with Jupiter and the ninth house and the moon. Um, you could be someone like some kind of a guide, you know. You could be even a religious leader or a spirit. I mean, religious leader sounds kind of pretentious. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, especially the kind of people that watch tarot readings on a regular basis. Um, but this could be like you're some kind of a, yeah, you're some kind of a leader, a spiritual leader, a, a thinker. A, like Jupiter basically is a Jupiter and Mercury and Virgo and the 10th house and the 9th house are reinforcements of the Queen of Swords, you know. Also, to some extent, the Seven of Swords. I think, like, you are meant to fight against de deception. You know, you are meant to, you know, teach people how to think logically as well. Because, so you could literally, for some of you, you could literally be teachers. Because Mercury and Virgo is about exact sciences, you know. So you could have your gifts, for some of you, could be related to mathematics, physics, you know, biology, stuff like that. Um, you could, of course, because you have Virgo here, um, and there's all the stuff about women, it's like you could be teaching women about, I don't know, like, you know, stuff to do with health, even, you know, this is very specific, but for some of you, it could be the case, you know, like teaching women about sexual education, for instance. Um, but you could be teaching about health, you could be in health care, definitely. Um, but whichever field you might be in, I think there is definitely a reinforcement that you are meant to be like, a, for some of you, literally, like I said, a whistleblower, you know, you're someone who is, you know, touching the masses. And for some of you even touching the masses, but for all of you, it's you're meant to work outside of the home, definitely. So like you have some kind of a strong social responsibility here. Um, and you are about justice. You have to fight for justice and truth. Those are your gifts to the world. And also your empathy, your intuition. And with Venus, your artistic talents as well. And also your ability to negotiate and to be diplomatic and to be a mediator. Um, let me see. Tenth house and ninth house as well. This is interesting. Like, I think... I mean, this is pretty specific, but for some of you, like, your gift to the world could have something to do with uh, your father, your father figure, your father's lineage. Um, this could be, like, either you are going to be walking in your father's shoes, your father's professions, 
careers that existed in your paternal lineage. So you might be carrying down some kind of legacy for some of you, maybe continuing your father's work. You could also be working for the state, which makes sense. I mean, justice system, judicial system with the Jupiter, definitely you could be what you could be like working to change legislations or you could be a lawyer fighting for underprivileged um, people. And you, for some of you, very specific, it could be like your gift to the world is your ability to work with children and young people. Maybe even literally your children. Like maybe you're meant to have some, you know, children that are going to have a strong contribution to the world later on when they grow up. Yeah, so this is pretty much what I can see in your reading. And I hope that you have found it useful because I certainly have. I thought it was very, very interesting. And if you have, of course, please comment in the comment section. I'm very curious to hear how it resonated, if it resonated you know, anything you would like to say, I'm very interested in reading your comments. And also, if you have liked it, please do not forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel, please. It is free and it will only take a second. And also, if you want to see when I'm going to post a new video, also hit the notifications bell. And if you're interested in a personal consultation, you can email me at the email in the video description. I can also send you a pricing list and some reviews, some feedbacks that I have gotten so far for my readings, as well as some sample readings so you can see what they look like. Okay, so... Hello, pile number four. This is your reading. If you have chosen this card right here that says, my home is my castle, or this uh, fluorite pendant. Very, very nice. Okay. Um, so I'm going to add timestamps. You can skip directly to your reading because I'm going to be taking my time with the card selection. So, Spirit, tell me. What can you tell me about pile number four? The people who have chosen the fluorite pendant. What are their gifts to the world? What can you tell me about the people who chose the fluorite pendant? What are their gifts to the world, Spirit? What are they meant to focus on in this life? What are their main gifts to the world? Help me out, Spirit. The people who chose the fluorite pendant. The people who chose the fluorite pendant. This one? Spirit, this one? I don't know. Spirit, help me out. What are pile number four's main gifts to the world? What are pile number four's main gifts to the world? Okay. Fox, clever. Okay. I'm going to read the descriptions after I select all the cards. Elephant, greatness interesting let me try not to burn down everything okay i'm gonna put the cards here <clears throat> spirit what are pile number four's main contributions to the world main gifts to the world help me out here spirit what are pile number four's main contributions to the world help me choose a Help me choose the right cards. This one, I feel. This one. This one. Spirit, what are pile number four's main contributions to the world? What are their main gifts to the world in this lifetime? Help me out, Spirit. Help me out, Spirit. This one. What are pile number four's main contributions to the world? I don't know. This one. This one, I think. 
Okay. So. I hope the image is not moving too much. Okay, so you have the Queen of Cups, the Knight of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, the Queen of Wands, again, wow, if you feel drawn to pile number three, you should check it out, the Five of Wands, the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, Spirit, what are pile number four's main contributions to the world? What are their main gifts to the world, Spirit? Help me out here. Help me choose the right cards for them. Spirit, what are pile number four's main contributions to the world in this lifetime? What are their main gifts to the world? Help me choose the right cards. What are pile number four's main contributions to the world? What are pile number four's main contributions to the world? What are pile number four's main contributions to the world? Not this one. So you have the Empress, the Sun. The Ace of Swords, you have three Aces, the Three of Pentacles, the Three of Swords, the Two of Pentacles. Okay, let me read the cards here, the Oracle cards. So you have Elephant, Greatness, Love is your strength, Leadership is your path. Your wisdom inspires everyone you meet. You can overcome any problem. You will naturally and easily achieve success. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen this card before, actually. Up until now. Fox, clever. You are swift and smart. Solutions to problems are easily found. Always listen to your instincts. Resources surround you. Be open to romance. Be open to a romance, okay? Um, now I'm going to read the description for this card. My home is my castle, number 39. I'm going to read from the booklet. Let me see. Number 39. Experience of life, growth, knowledge, age. The woman on the card carries a big castle on her shoulders. The castle is solid. It seems like it was growing each year of her life. The castle stands for the woman's soul. Inside its enduring walls, she keeps all her memories, thoughts, knowledge, and feelings. The older the woman gets, the more this fortress of life grows. It keeps her company, defends her against pain, and provides the foundation for her true self to continue its journey. Wow, that's really cool. Okay. Very nice, very nice. Mm hmm so what are your main gifts to the world here you have the empress you have the queen of wands and the queen of cups so and the sun really strong cards as well so i think that your main gift to the world first of all is your wisdom in one word your due to your life experience 
I feel like your whatever your main contributions to the world are meant to be, the experiences you are going to have in your life are going to unique, uniquely prepare you for these gifts, for you to provide these gifts to the world, basically, if that makes sense. Hold on. Yeah, I had to check something. Um, so, yeah, basically you are being, you know, guided, I think, from a young age, I would say, to have certain experiences that are going to prepare you for the right kind of wisdom, I think. The right kind of wisdom that you are ultimately meant to share. Really interesting that it says, be open to romance, and you have the Three of Swords here. Hmm. So... Greatness. Look at this. Love is your strength. Leadership is your path. Your wisdom inspires. Wow, it actually says wisdom. I didn't even realize. I didn't pay attention too much. Like, your wisdom inspires everyone you meet. You can overcome any problem. So, the elephant, like the woman carrying the castle here, like, gives me this feeling of, like, you know, huge inertia. Uh, like, a literally a grand person. Okay, so I think that you are meant for pretty big things in this life and I think that your ability to love despite setbacks despite despite hardships that you have experienced I think that is part of your path part of what you are meant to provide to the world you know wait hold on I think I'm gonna have to pause or like let me see if I have to pause or not um no can you see let me check I hope you can see right if not I'm gonna have to like re-record and ho I hope not so yeah Basically, I think your ability to overcome hardship and look at this. I think you also have the ability to deal with people from very different backgrounds, maybe even different cultures. I think you have a great ability to manage conflict. And I think that because of your experiences, you have the ability to teach other people about how to manage conflicts and about how to manage heartbreaks, among other things. And look at this, you have the Ace of Pentacles and you have the Two of Pentacles. And you also have a lot of Aces here, like you have the Ace of Swords, the Ace of Cups. I think the only one that's missing is the Ace of Wands. Um, so I think you have really, you're kind of like meant to be a pioneer, really. You are meant to be like some kind of an opener of roads that you are meant to take roads that other people have never taken before, I think. And because of the sun as well, like you have this ability to be a leader. The queen of wands again, similarly to, I think, pile number three, if I'm not mistaken. So if you felt drawn to pile number three, you might want to watch that as well because there might be messages for you. Because I think that you probably have strong fire energy in your chart, strong Leo energy. Personally, I use the sidereal zodiac, but it doesn't really matter which one you use. You might have a strong sun in your chart as well. But I think with this energy, the empress and the sun, um, I think that you are meant to be kind of like a leader. You know, even almost like a, a father figure or slash a mother figure to people, a guiding force. the empress as well your gift to the world is also uh, your femininity your nurturing ability your healing ability and i think that it's also you know it, it may not be like a particular field it's just your experience gives you the ability to tell other people how to tackle life's challenges so you're very good like as a 
spiritual counselor, literally a counselor, maybe a psychologist, a therapist. And like I said, you also have this great ability to work with people from all walks of life, I think. You can relate to people from very different backgrounds. And that's like, that's your gift to the world as well, your ability to connect to others. Whether it is immediately apparent or not, like it's, or maybe it's something you have to cultivate, you know, by a certain age in your life. And your gift to the world is also your ability to multitask. Your ability to juggle multiple interests at the same time. And you could also be teaching people about, you know, things like time management, basically anything that ha like this makes me think of something like a life coach, you know, a health coach telling people how to live, I think. But you are also like a pioneer, I think. You're also a person who, yeah, you don't, you're not, a f well, maybe you have some fears like most people have, but you really have the ability, I think, that your gifts are meant to be, you know, being like, being the first of, of you, something. Like, you know, starting a new, uh, with the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Cups, I definitely think like this could be about things like, um, you know, telling people how to live, you know, counseling. Something that blends intellectual ability with emotions, intuitions, and also creativity as well. The Ace of Pentacles, again, this could be like, and because you have these two together, I think your path could be like maybe, um, you know, your gift could be connected to teaching other people um, to choose the right career. So something like... Um, you could even be working in like human resources, I think, but it, it's like more than that. I think like your ultimate gift is about, you know, creating, you know, bringing something completely new, really. Some kind of new perspective, a new approach, a new idea. The Ace of Swords is about new ideas, you know, revolutionary ideas. But since you also have like the Three of Pentacles and the Five of Wands, the Queen of Wands... Which the Queen of Wands to me also speaks of having a shadow side and dealing with a shadow side. So to me, really, this this makes me think of like something like uh, human resources, teaching, well, teaching people in general about relating, I think. But it could be particularly about something like, you know, human resources, finding the right people for the right place. If that makes sense. Hold on, I have to fix this. Be right back. Back. So I hope it's better because the image was getting a little bit weird. I think it was like sliding down or something. Anyway, so yeah, I think like really it, it makes me think of like someone who, you know, is, is like a career coach, a life coach, something like that. Like help helping people, especially I would say young people, making the right choices. I definitely feel like for some of you, this could be the main gift you have to the world. Because of the Empress as well, like, I definitely feel like your gifts are something about, you know, and also these cards as well about wisdom. I think that, you know, your gifts are about guiding people with respect to, like I said, life choices, emotions, how to deal with, how to deal with their emotions. The Empress is a, a healing energy, right? So... It's about like something to do with the health field as well for some of you that could definitely be the case. So therapy, something like that. Like, yeah, human resources, that's a strong one. And also with the sun, for some of you, this could be about being, well, on the one hand, it's like being a leader in many ways. You know, the sun is about being a leader. Of, this could be a manager, you know, being in higher management. Um, this is also about just being a guide, being a teacher, enlightening the people that are, well, confused, that need guidance. The Knight of Pentacles, and also with the Ace of Pentacles here. So, definitely here, like, the Knight of Pentacles, it's also about you. I think your gift to the world is your ability to build financial stability and i think again this could be teaching people about financial stability or how to handle finances 
how to make the right choices. Collaboration, teaching people about collaborations. This is what uh, this is what I was thinking about when I was looking at this, and also teaching people how to get, you know, how to overcome hardships and heartbreaks. I think so. This is pretty much what I can see here. Let me see if I can think of any other combinations. Yeah, but I definitely feel like for you, if I were to sum it up in one word, it's pioneer. Like you're meant to be a pioneer of some sorts. You know, I would say even entrepreneur for many of you. Teacher, guide, you know, these are the gifts. You're definitely meant to be successful. I can see that. And love is like, it's really interesting now that it says, Love is your strength, where where I read that somewhere. Hmm. Always listen to your instincts, resources surround you, be open to romance. No, I think love is your yeah, this is this is the first sentence. Love is your strength. And you have the ace of cups right here in the middle, underneath the over the ace of swords. Yeah. You can overcome any problem. So it's like these are your gifts, you know, your gift is your ability to love. And I think that ability to love keeps you going, you know, pushes you to overcome any hardships, any disappointments, no matter how often, no matter how harsh. And because of this, because of this staying power and this like faith, I think ultimately you have the ability to guide others as well and to love others. You have this great healing ability. And I definitely feel like for some of you, especially if you're a woman, the gifts you have also are about motherhood, you know, about nurturing. This could be about teaching as well in general, irrespective of your gender, you know, guiding young people, but especially also motherhood, parenthood as well, even if you're a man, you know, can be about nurturing children, you know, being a guiding force. And teaching people to collaborate. That's a different, like, you know, interpersonal relations. You bring people together, yeah, in one word. I think you have that ability. You have a, the ability to inspire and unite people. And your gifts are also, aside from love and intuition, your intellect as well. Your ideas, your ideas are your gift. You have strong ideas, especially when it comes to, I think, interpersonal relations and, you know, things to do with psychology, stuff like that, maybe teaching as well. And some of the things that I managed, that I mentioned before as well. So like, you know, managing money, you know, how to organize your time. That's another thing. How to make time for everything you're interested in. I feel that's, that's a thing for you. You know, like, I think you you are the kind of person that can juggle multiple activities or eventually you will reach a point where you can juggle multiple interests successfully and you can reach a point where you teach other people how to, you know, how to just pursue everything they want to achieve, you know, their heart desire, their heart's desire, basically. Okay, so this is what I can see from the cards and now let me get into the astrological messages spirit what can you tell me about pile number four what are their gifts to the world wait um what are their gifts to the world spirit what are pile number four's gifts to the world okay how many we have five seven one more Spirit, what are pile, what's pile number four gift to the world? Help me out here, Spirit. Okay, jumped out. So let's see. Capricorn, you are meant for success. That's something that I would think about. Capricorn is about climbing. Oh, fifth house, I'm not surpri surprised. So Capricorn is about climbing the social ladder. So reaching a respectable position in society. Second house, interesting. That's about family. 
Mercury intellectual abilities. Like I said, your ideas are a gift. Saturn, your hard work, your staying power. And wow, you are more than any other, I think, meant to be very successful. Aquarius. Being a pioneer, being a revolutionary, Sagittarius. Having wisdom, being a teacher. Venus as well. Wow, okay. This is like a confirmation of the Empress energy with the Venus, okay? So I think also really for you, um, well, Venus is about love as well, you know, love in general. So it is kind of a confirmation as well as of the Ace of Cups and these Oracle cards that say, you know, love is your strength. Look at this. Love is your strength and a be about be open to romance, right? Be open to romance. Wow. So Venus with the fifth house as well. Like I think your gift is just your ability to love. Like you're very romantic as well. So your gift is like teaching people how to love, you know, love in general. So not just the people that you love romantically, the people you have relationships with, but anyone you meet, I think you have a kind of warmth that, you know, you inspire other people, you give other people hope with your way of being. And also, I think you have a very strong healing abil ability. Venus also is a reinforcement of something to do with, you know, being a therapist, any kind of situation where you are in one-on-one -on -one situations, one-on-one -on -one relationships, sorry, interactions, right? So, negotiator, therapist, counselor of any kind, marriage counselor, psychotherapist, something like that. You could be something like that. Um, Venus is just about relationships in general as well. It's about being diplomatic. So you could be a great mediator. So it's, it's definitely a reinforcement of all these energies here. Sagittarius is about being a teacher. It's about, you know, um, inspiring others so there's definitely the strong fire energy even though you didn't get the sun you have the Sagittarius which is fire energy so this is about being a teacher the, the sun Leo and Sagittarius are basically the two energies Sagittarius slash Jupiter are the energies that are most connected to teaching and you also have fifth house you know which is ruled by leo and the sun so hmm, there is kind of a confirmation here i think that for some of you you can definitely you are meant to be a teacher i think a teacher professor definitely just to guide people that are less enlightened you know people that need guidance a counselor you know of any kind a consultant you could be a consultant on on various um various uh subjects or, you know, lines of work. The second house, hmm, interesting. I think your gift to the world also has to do with, um, I, it, for some of you, this is very specific cooking. Like, maybe if you have been drawn to starting a restaurant to be a basically nurturing ability, you know, feeding people. But also, things to do with family here, again. So there's like a reinforcement of, um, you are good at building a family, you have, you could even have good relations with the family of origin, but that, that's more specific and it's probably not true for all of you. But with the second house, there's definitely a focus on, you know, building family, focusing on family affairs. So it's kind of like a reinforcement of the Empress energy, I think. And also with Venus and the Empress, I think for some of you, your gift is your beauty or your touch for your aesthetic touch, you know, like, I think you're the kind of person that brings beauty to like even even the most mundane circumstances like you're maybe you you set the table very beautifully or I don't know like you you do little origami things or like you you're very good at decorating places I think you are your gift is your artistic ability your beauty as well could even be your physical beauty like for some of you you could be really good looking and or also artistic talents, right? So Venus is about arts in general. With the second house, this could be your voice. For some of you, you could have a good voice, beautiful voice. It could be a singer. Cooking as well. So anything to do with 
the five senses, enjoying sensuality, stuff like that. That's Venus in the second house. With Aquarius, you have a great ability to, like I said, like, you know, you can relate to people from all walks of life. You can have friends from different backgrounds. You can easily relate to people like on a universal plane and you can unite people because of that. Also because of the fifth house as well and Venus, like you're diplomatic, you can relate to people universally. You probably have strong emotional intelligence. Capricorn and Saturn is very interesting. So I feel like the strongest message actually here is your gift to the world is your um, perseverance and also your ability to create a solid foundation, you know, your seriousness, your responsibility, your dependability. Well, which actually kind of reinforces this energy here, you know, <laughs> because Capricorn is about resources of the earth. It's an earth sign. It's even about building, you know, like when I think of Capricorn, it's about building something brick by brick. So it kind of like this image is almost like a literal representation of Capricorn energy. My home is my castle. Hmm. Also, it's about the Empress as well. So um, for some of you, this is very specific, but this could even be like some of you are, you know, meant to be like architects, meant to be um, into, to a lesser extent, I would say real estate. But I would say something like home decoration, architects, something like that. That could definitely be a thing for you now that I think about it. <clears throat> or with Capricorn and Saturn, this could be about constructions, like your gift could be, I mean, when it comes to professions, this could be about, you know, working in things with constructions, with uh, resources of the earth. For some of you, I mean, if you are into the beauty industry, this could be like, uh, you know, working with gemstones, jewelry, stuff like that. Um, for others, this could be stuff like working with, you know renewable energy stuff like that you know finding new alternative sources of energy like i said i think you are meant to be a pioneer and also you are meant to be very successful i think based on these cards mercury shows definitely your you know mercury is like a confirmation of the ace of swords to me because you know it and also to some extent this energy the three of pentacles as well because it's about your ability to communicate. You're a very good communicator. And you also have very good logical ability, very logic logical thinking. You know, so this these are also your gifts to the world. Your ability to communicate and your ability to be logical and analytical. This kind of goes hand in hand as well. So I'm wondering if for some of you, this could be like, you're going to be like a writer, composer, you know, singer, maybe public speaker for some of you, definitely. But yeah, this is pretty much what I can see with you i'm definitely pioneer getting here pioneer something you could be a pioneer in multiple areas of course not multiple areas but i mean of some of you in some areas some areas some of you in different areas so i mean i'm definitely getting artistic ability here so some of you could be more artistically inclined and for others of you you could be more pragmatic more focused on um you know like like let's say something like i said you know connected to natural resources you know i think you can really reach a position that is very respectable and dependable so you could be dealing with problems that humanity even deals with like on a grand scale you know so things to do that's why i thought about renewable resources even um for those of you who actually work in hands-on fields but for others, it could be about coming up with ideas that have never been thought up before. Like you could be revolutionizing the healthcare, the mental healthcare field, for instance. You know, you could be changing ideas. But because of Capricorn and Aquarius, like this is really giving me the vibe of you touching really 
large audiences, you know, large groups of people. Because of Mercury as well, you know, it's, it's like, there's like the strong message of you being a teacher, a guide for large groups of people. And of course, for some of you, this could literally be that you are some kind of a teacher. You could be teaching a uh, professor, teacher, something like that, you know, guiding people, like I said. I'm not getting so much like spiritual fields here, to be honest. So I don't think that you would be like a spiritual leader. I think that's one of the biggest differences between um, your pile and the previous one or two, I think, because there are some similar configurations, but with you, I think it's more pragmatic. There's not so much, um, you know, focus on esoteric things, I would say. See how that resonates. So this is what I have seen in your reading, and I hope you have enjoyed it because I definitely have. And if you have, please like, and please comment in the comment section because I would be very interested to hear your feedback or anything you want to share. Thoughts. I'm going to leave this out like here so you can look at them maybe. I don't know if you can see them properly, but I'm going to spread them out. Um, so, yes. I, please comment in the comment section. Of course, if you have enjoyed this video, please do not forget to like it. And also subscribe, please. It's free. It only takes a second and it's the easiest way to support my channel. If you have found value in any of my videos, please subscribe. And also, if you're interested in a personal reading in tarot, you can email me at the email in the video description and I can send you a pricing list and I can send you reviews and feedbacks that I have gotten so far as well as sample readings if you would be curious to find out more. So... Thank you for listening.